Please share the information provided in this video. Always remember that a crucial part of removing a person's confusion is understanding his or her unique source of it. Why is there something rather than nothing? This is a fundamental question that humanity is always asked. Now, Professor Lawrence Krauss is a physicist, and he wants science, physical observation, to answer this question. And he says, nothing is unstable. It always produces something. Asking why something is there rather than nothing is like asking why some flowers are blue and some flowers are yellow. So this is a little bit weird to us. We want to say, Dr. Krauss, I mean, how did, how did you observe that nothing has this property of instability and that it does things, that it always produces something? Wouldn't nothing be inherent in its very definition unobservable? And he says, well, no, it's not. And like, what do you mean? Well, he means empty space. He means a quantum vacuum. He means like a space that's completely got no matter in it. And he's, it, he's noticing that that produces more empty space and matter. And that it has an unstable property. Dr. Krauss and anyone who thinks he's making sense, changing the question is not the same thing as answering the question. I mean, I feel like I'm an atheist having to deal with some religious nut job because their just mind is set on, you know, they can't think outside the box. We're not asking you whether something, you know, whether empty space is something or nothing, you know, or we're asking you in the true sense of the word why is there something rather than nothing? And he says, well, I don't like the philosophical definition of nothing. We know that that's completely wrong. Let's change the definition of nothing. Okay, but what about with the other definition B? Let's just ask the first question. Why is there something rather than nothing with the other definition of nothing that you don't seem to want to talk about? Can we ask that question? Or is it just not okay to ask that question? And a further question is, how could any physical observation tell us that nothing did something or something supernatural created the universe was it nothing or was it something supernatural oh you can't observe nothing and you can't observe the supernatural because they're outside of the physical world they're non-physical both of them I don't know and he even defies logic he says well you know because I've been talking to you about logic and being rational and reasonable he says well to look at this logical argument all humans are mortal Socrates is a man therefore Socrates is mortal and he says, Baha, if we make humans immortal in the future, then we have defeated logic. No, no, God, no. <laughs> the premises, one and two, are not part of the logic. It's just the only part of the logic is that if one and two are true, then three has to be true. Dun, 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 dun.